Yeah, good morning YouTube. Just uh, wired up a little test last night and actually tried it again this morning. Uh, what I did was I took this, this is one of the extended capacity pack uh, battery management boards, one of the early models. This one appears to be around a 2008-2009 uh, design, judging by date codes. Uh, anyway, I added a an XT60 connector here, which is hooked up to the battery pack negative, and then over to the battery pack positive connection. And I tried that first, and didn't get any any uh, positive results. I didn't get you know 20 volts here on the uh, output connector, so I thought perhaps the the little chip, which this one seems to be battery protection IC 16 pin, although the data sheets online say it's for three or four series, and this is using five. Perhaps they've added uh, added some circuitry, but I thought perhaps that battery protection IC needs to see five cells. So I added a, a little balance plug here and connected up the red wire starting from the uh, is at the battery positive and then I pick up the individual cell uh, tabs from one, two, three, four. This one's on top, five, and that's the sixth uh, balance plug pin. And when I plug that in, I get uh, the expected voltages. I get 0 volts at this end, 4 volts, 8 volts, 12 volts, 16 volts, and 20 volts. So that seems to be working right. Still don't get any, I get about half the battery voltage out here, like uh, 9, 8, 9 volts. And the little protection IC starts to get really warm like you can hardly touch it when it's powered up and that seems to be only when the balance connector is plugged in well I had this uh, lipo pack charged up to 21 volts so I discharged it down below 20 volts thinking that perhaps the since this the Craftsman batteries seem to be set up to 4.1 volts or 20 and a half pack voltage. I thought perhaps the over voltage was uh, causing this guy trouble, although the, the data sheets say it's good for up to 25 volts uh, power input. But I discharged this down to about 19.8 volts and plugged it in this morning and I get the same overheating so I think that kind of rules out my option of keeping this uh, everything actually fits in here I, I put the uh, uh, just to show you what that looks like yeah, there we go and then I can plug that was my plan was if, if this all worked I could plug the balance cable in over here the uh, power connector over here and plug in the fuel gauge right here and basically have a lipo pack inside and have the uh, onboard protection circuitry and have the uh, cutoff you know all those good things I'd have the over temperature uh, sensor it would kind of be in the right spot to pick up uh, all that, but this this battery protection I see here doesn't seem to be too ha happy with that either. That or it's a defective board. I might try doing the same thing on another battery pack just to uh, see if perhaps this one's defective. But I think my third plan for these, uh, so the first plan was just to uh, replace 18650 cells. The second plan was to use this uh, 1800 milliamp hour lipo pack with this existing board. 
But the third option, which I think makes more sense, is to, let's see if I can find my parts here. Okay, and the third option would be to just use the power post, power connector post here inside the top of the battery. Uh, of course, this will be an XT60 connector, not the Dean's plug. Uh, and that would uh, probably be just right underneath the, the top there. And the balance plug would be run out the side of the pack. And I would hook the fuel gauge into the, the red and black wires here because the fuel gauge is completely standalone. And doing so gives me a little bit more room. I don't have that heat sink over here so I could actually put a 2450 milliamp hour lipo pack in the same spot so I'd get an extra 650 milliamp hours and just eliminate all of this circuit board like I say these are the early boards and they they seem to have the least amount of circuitry and I think this may only be battery protection. I'm even wondering if there's uh, balance charging because these don't have the large capacitor and the additional circuitry that the uh, later boards do. So in light of this being an older board, perhaps only doing battery protection, I think just having the fuel gauge push the button and I could also plug in my uh, little uh, voltage monitor to the balance plug have that sticking outside the case like I do on the Black & Decker and uh, then just use the uh, something like an IMAX or a you know a, a lithium-ion ch balance charger because I even you know if this thing doesn't have balance charging on it that may be why on uh, these packs I'm finding like eight or nine or ten like in this particular pack all ten cells were dead and then the only thing I need to figure out is what to do with these two temperature sensor probes uh, I'll just have to find out if I don't know if I short them or leave them open or perhaps there needs to be a resistor in there. But I think the first step is just to try one of these without any um, circuitry inside, just a battery fuel gauge and uh, see if it works. So I will update you as I make some progress on this. Just wanted to uh, show my couple of experiments in between why I went the direction I decided to go. I was hoping that would be kind of nice if you could uh, salvage this but I don't think there's actually anything terribly important on there that you can't do uh, with with like that little external uh, low voltage monitor that I did on the Black & Decker so I can use that but I think with the uh, push button fuel gauge built in that that should be plenty decent. You could then hit the button and see you know if it's yellow or red, time to swap battery packs and having the extra capacity would be a really nice benefit. So I will update you when I make some progress on this and uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos subscribe to the channel for updates. Uh, thanks for watching.